Lay all parts out in a logical fashion using the schematic as a guide. Open the service kit and identify each replacement part. Replace each used part with its equivalent from the service kit and remove all old parts from the work surface. Thus, at the end of service, no parts should remain on the table. Install the low-pressure seat in the end of the piston. Press the low-pressure seat in firmly, ensuring that it is flush with the piston with no gaps. Install lightly lubricated O-rings on the piston spindle. Before creating the piston assembly, confirm that the balance cylinder seals to the piston. Sealing the low pressure seat to a polished surface, place the balance cylinder on the piston and tap it with a finger with no spring. The balance cylinder should bounce back, confirming a seal in the chamber. Now add the spring, place the balance cylinder on the end of the piston inside the spring and set the assembly aside. Add the O-ring to the orifice, being careful to protect the knife edge. Lightly lubricate the orifice threads. Making sure to avoid contact between the knife edge and the adjust tube, carefully push the orifice into the threaded end. Using a 3 16 hex key, thread the orifice into the adjust tube. Prevent cross-threading by initially turning counterclockwise until you feel a click. Then thread the orifice in three complete turns clockwise. Place a lightly lubricated O-ring in the land on the knob end of the adjust tube. Using a thin pick or the pinch technique may help lift the O-ring over the edges of the land. If the lever was removed during disassembly, ensure that the step on the piston is properly oriented as the assembly passes the air outlet. The bottom of the step should be opposite the square brooch. Continue pushing the assembly in until the step is at the depth of the tiny square brooch. Take care to keep the adjust tube level so that the piston assembly does not shift position and fail lever engagement. Now insert one foot of the lever in the square brooch. Insertion is facilitated by lifting the lever past vertical so the foot is horizontal. Consider using a small square of paper to protect the finish of the adjust tube as you gently spread the lever leg over the tube. Confirm lever engagement with the piston. Confirm correct orientation of the lever by looking at the outlet hole. The side of the lever should not occlude the outlet hole even partially. If it does, the lever has been installed on the wrong side. If the lever was retained during disassembly, a different technique is used. Thread the zip tie from the service kit between the lever leg and adjust tube. Form a large bow and thread the end of the zip tie between the tube and the other leg of the lever. Fold the lever flat and slide the zip tie against the feet of the lever. This spreads the legs enough to allow piston passage. Orient the piston assembly so that the step in the piston is matched to the outlet hole. You will feel slight resistance as the low pressure seat passes the feet of the lever. Now remove the zip tie. Using a dowel or thin tool, push on the balance cylinder at the knob end of the adjust tube and confirm lever engagement. Install two unlubricated O-rings on the knob adjust core. Unlubricated O-rings provide the friction required to retain the part in the knob. Press the core into the knob and confirm that it is fully seated. 
using a blunt pick, lever out and reseat the core if the top is not flush with the knob. Install a lightly lubricated o-ring on the knob. Lubricate the knob threads. Using a slight rocking motion to slide the o-ring past the sharp inner threads of the adjust tube, insert the knob. And when the threads engage, screw the knob in. The lever should rise, and you should feel spring tension in the lever. Continue screwing the knob in until the pinhole is clear. Slip in the pin and center it evenly. Unscrewing the knob will tend to displace the pin to one side. If the pin is not symmetrical, screw in the knob a bit and readjust. Make sure to unscrew the knob fully to trap the pin until the deflector knob is installed. An asymmetric pin may catch the deflector knob on installation. Place a lightly lubricated o-ring on the deflector knob. Slide the deflector knob onto the adjust tube with the flange covering the lever. This will allow it to pass easily over the lever. Rotate the deflector 180 degrees while controlling the lever and then slide it fully into place against the collar. The collar of the tube traps the pin in place. Slide the adjust tube assembly into the main housing. Do not push with the adjuster knob to avoid uncovering and potentially losing the pin. Pay attention to the flats on the adjust tube, ensuring that they pass smoothly between the lugs on the inside of the main housing. Once again, Confirm easy lever motion. Add the o-ring to the threaded end of the adjust tube. Spin the heatsink nut onto the tube with the hex flat outermost. Carefully tighten the heatsink nut. Do not over tighten the nut as you may rotate the adjust tube in the case, permanently deforming the lugs that keep the lever vertical. After tightening, inspect the lever tips against the rim of the case to confirm that they remain symmetrical. If the adjust tube has been over torqued, the case will be need to be replaced. Blow in the hose end of the adjust tube with your mouth and confirm that there is a leak. If not, depress the lever and unscrew the orifice one half turn. With a leaking valve, depress the lever and screw the orifice clockwise one quarter turn at a time and recheck the seal. Repeat as needed and stop when the valve seals to breath pressure. This is a preliminary orifice position which ensures that the valve will still leak slightly when full intermediate pressure is applied during tuning. With the orifice in its preliminary position, examine the tips of the lever. They should protrude approximately 1 to 2 millimeters above the case rim. If the lever is lower than this, consult the tips and tricks document available on the website for troubleshooting. If the exhaust cover has been removed for inspection or valve replacement, after once again warming the part in hot water for 3 minutes, slide it onto the case from below and pull each top corner over the flange in the case. The regulator is now ready for tuning. You may wish to wait to install the diaphragm until you have confirmed correct orifice position and lever height when pressurized. Connect the second stage to a tuned first stage using an inline adjuster with a hex tip. The first stage should supply an intermediate pressure of 125 to 145 psi. Ensure that the adjust knob is fully unscrewed. With the valve sealed to lung pressure from the previous step, 
it will nonetheless leak when IP is applied. Engage the adjuster in the hex of the orifice. Now slowly turn the orifice with the inline adjuster under pressure with the valve leaking until the valve just seals. The orifice knife edge is now in contact with the soft low pressure seat and it is important from this point on to press lightly on the lever to lift the seat from the orifice to avoid cutting it. An inline shutoff valve will reduce noise and waste less gas if available during repeated orifice adjustments. In any case, with the lever depressed, after the valve was just sealed to intermediate pressure, now add an additional 1 12th of a turn, that is 30 degrees or 5 minutes on the clock face, to the orifice. This will account for the groove that develops in a low pressure seat during storage. With the lever adjusted, but pressurized, it typically drops one to two millimeters from its initial position. Screwing in the orifice more than just a small amount accentuates that lever drop and may impair valve opening. A low lever provides inadequate gas flow at depth with higher gas density and may be fatal. Instead, with the valve sealed at intermediate pressure and one twelfth turn, added to the orifice, confirm that the lever is no lower than one millimeter below the case rim. Now install the diaphragm using a wooden dowel to ensure that the rim is fully seated in the groove in the case. Add the diaphragm washer and again seat it fully. Screw the cover into place. To avoid cross-threading, start by unscrewing until you feel the click of the first thread dropping into place. Using a magnahelic or water manometer, measure the suction required to just open the valve as indicated by a drop in intermediate pressure from the first stage. If cracking effort is less than 0.9 inches, you may add one more 30 degree turn to the orifice. No more than that is permitted and all other adjustments are performed with the adjust knob. With a cracking effort below your desired setting, add partial turns to the adjust knob and recheck cracking effort each time. Determine how much of a turn on the adjust knob is required to reach your desired cracking effort. In this case, with 1.2 inches desired, one quarter turn on the knob is required. Therefore, this regulator should always be dived with no less than one quarter turn added to the knob. Once the second stage is tuned, install the mouthpiece and secure it with a zip tie. Tighten it firmly and clip the end of the zip tie with side biting shears. Check that the wings of the mouthpiece remain symmetrical after tightening. You can adjust the position of the mouthpiece slightly by pushing on the protruding zip tie lock. This completes reassembly and tuning of the Gears D6 second stage. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only, to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.